These two flat cars are essentially the same. One has black lettering while the other has blue. Plus one is kind of clean, while the other one is a potential biohazard. I bought four items from the same seller, each at $3.99, and for some reason the seller gave me free shipping. So four bucks per freight car is a bargain anywhere, anytime. A little squeeze with the needle nose pliers to this plastic pin and the pieces come apart. But uh, seriously, what is growing on the bottom here? Mm. In the 1970s, the lettering was applied with some sort of heat stamping process. So the words and numbers are actually imprinted into the plastic. Wet sanding with 400 grit paper gets rid of most of it, but I have to be careful not to remove the molded rivet details. Drilling a series of holes will allow other models to be held in place with thin wire. I'll spray these in brown to match a few other flat cars I already own. Plus, I really hate yellow on toys and trains. The color is a little darker and glossier than I would have liked, but it's all that I could find in the garage. And really, these flat cars aren't the focus of a refinishing project. They're just going to be used to display die-cast cars and trucks that I plan to do in the future. Reassembly goes quickly and smoothly, which is always a nice thing. Thin craft wire is woven around the car's axles and then fed through the flat car's holes. While some may have a preference for one hole over the other, I feel that it's important to use both holes. You can tighten these wires with pliers and then trim them for neatness, but this model is here only for a demonstration. A project like this could be completed in one day if your paint dries quickly, and it helps to pass the time and can be reused in a variety of situations in the future. Different models, different display cabinets, different layouts. This has been Bob's Workshop, and until next time, thanks for watching, and take care. Thank you.